Let's go, baby, let's go. Good morning, family. Did you put God first today? I know I did. I woke up, ba, ba, duck, boom, with that knockout punch because I'm not gonna go hard for the lie no more, family. I just wanna thank you guys. I reached 1K subscribers last night. I started this channel nine months ago on my Android phone, and now I come out here every day on my iPhone, and I make videos, and I reach 1K subscribers, and I'm so thankful for that because this is my purpose. The Lord pulled the needle out of my arm so I can continue to spread the good news on what he's done for me. I'm so thankful for this, family. Also, if you don't mind liking this video, it really helps the algorithm algorithm get out there it really helps me spread my channel out there and I want to use this as hands and feet for God to be able to spread the good news to more people since I picked up like 600 subscribers over the last month or so I really want to share my story again so you guys know exactly where I'm coming from family and my story and how I came to the Lord but I grew up in Hesperia, California, and I had never done drugs in my entire life, but I had never gone to church before. I never walked with God. I knew nothing about God at that time. I ended up getting drafted in high school by the Cleveland Indians in the 11th round. I choose not to sign at this point. So I end up going to community college. I go to Riverside Community College, and at this point, I end up we end up winning the, uh, the national championship. We had an amazing team, the RCC Tigers, the year 2000, absolute amazing team. I end up going 14 and one. I end up winning pitcher of the year right there. So what happens is I get drafted now by the Houston Astros. Now I get offered $120,000 and now like the parable, the prodigal son, I've been like given my inheritance. So I'm given this money and I go out there and all I do is chase pleasures, family. I have no type of any idea spiritually or anything about God. I know nothing about Jesus. I go out there and I feed the flesh. I feed the flesh. I feed the flesh and I absolutely uh, go on a downward spiral in life, but I'm able to because of my purpose at seven o'clock every single night I'm able to maintain a lifestyle, right? So I'm playing through the minor leagues. I'm moving up through the minor leagues I'm going out at night. I'm partying. I'm chasing pleasures the thing about that when we chase pleasures You're never satisfied family. You are never satisfied. They will never fulfill you they will never fulfill you. So at 28 years old, I'm now in AAA. Now check this out, family. I'm, I'm driving to the stadium, right? My life seems good from the outside, but I'm seeking all the things wrong on the inside, family. But everything seems good, but it's not. I'm suffering in my spirit. I show up to the field. I'm 28 years old. I got a brand new Tundra, right? I got a condo. I'm making 6,000 a month. I'm still on my way, maybe possibly making it to the big leagues. I'm hung over a little bit, but I end up showing up to the stadium and I end up putting a 30 milligram Adderall in my body, which is amphetamine salts. It's for ADHD, which there's tons of kids on this stuff. This thing totally hooked me on amphetamine. I end up putting it in my body and I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm found a limitless pill, baby. I feel great. And the thing about drugs, family, if you're not an addict, is it fills that God-shaped void for just a little bit. It makes you feel like you're whole. You're like, I need this for the rest of my life. I now went from chasing my baseball dream to now becoming a junkie. Now, all I want to do is do Adderall. I need it because it makes me feel good. It makes me feel whole. Four years later, we're not talking about 10 years later. Four years later, now I'm playing in Canada right and now i'm I, my truck is repoed i'm living in a hotel i'm making 800 dollars a month and my dream to be a big leaguer is thrown out the window <laughs> gone my addiction now is 300 milligrams of adderall three doctors in each city 45 milligrams of oxycontin and now i'm smoking weed every day and i'm completely flying out of baseball at this point i'm a full-blown absolute junkie right now but i continue to try every which way to get clean and sober but I'm not putting God first, right? Because God was the last thing I tried, but God was the first thing that worked. So my whole, my idea, my stinking thinking thinks if I get out of baseball and change people, places, and thing and change that lifestyle, that I'm gonna go get clean. That's not what happens, family. You end up taking yourself with you. I get out of baseball and now the one thing that I had going for me every single day was I was able to go to a stadium and I was able to play baseball and I was able to stand on a mound and I was able to throw a ball to a catcher, get another grown man out and get paid good money to do that. Well, that was now taken from me. So when I got out of baseball and all my baseball brothers, we all can relate to this. When the stadium's taken and the field's taken, 
we're lost. We have no purpose. We don't know what to do. We had played baseball our whole entire lives. So what do I do? My brain searches and gravitates to the one thing that gave me comfort, and that was drugs. I go to crystal methamphetamine, right? I go to crystal meth, right? And the disease is progressive, and I have too much ego and pride to start a job at the bottom. I don't want to start cleaning toilets or scrubbing floors. I'm too prideful. I'm too good for that. I made it to the vice presidency of professional baseball. That's what my brain was telling me, man. I was not humble and pride will bring down a kingdom family. I'll tell you that right now. I gravitate towards crime. Crime was better than having a real job. Crime was funner. Yo, it was great. That's what I used to think in my head, right? Absolute unbelievable fall from grace so in order to do crime because i'm a good person at heart and i believe this and i know this and i'm afraid to commit crimes i end up putting the needle in my arm to be able to numb myself from everything and once you put the needle in your arm as a drug addict family very 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 difficult to come back from because at that moment you're like oh my gosh this is the best feeling i've ever had in my entire life and now the way that adderall felt back then on a fresh vessel now this is what the needle felt like the same exact thing this is what i needed for the rest of my life i continue to commit crime commit crime go in out of jail in and out of jail in and out of jail in and out of jail and now i was an absolute fall from grace ex-pro athlete full-blown junkie now homeless walking the streets, wandering in the wilderness, no hope, no purpose. But the Lord says that he leaves the 99 to rescue that one sheep. And he rescued me, he pulled me from the depths of hell. And how he did this is I was in Ontario, California, a three block radius for three years, committing crime, running amok, shooting up dope, being around the worst of the worst of society. And my buddy out of nowhere goes, hey, Monty, and this is God speaking. God will speak through other vessels to help save your life. He goes, let's go up north. I want to work as a vendor in a parade. He tells me to leave the needle at home right away because I'm so hooked on this. I'm like, what? Well, how am I going to do that? How am I going to do that? We end up going up north. I end up getting up there and I'm so strung out. I need to get high. I need to get high the way I get high. In Redding, California, they don't supply needles up there unless you have a prescription. Walgreens, Walmart, Rite Aid, they all turn me down. They all turned me down. They said, get out of my store, you junkie. I went on the side of the building like the prodigal son in the pig slop and I started crying, but this was my gift of desperation, family. I ended up accepting everything that I had done. I ended up going home the next day and I ended up turning myself into Ontario PD and they ended up taking me to jail. Now, while I was on the concrete floor and I had just a mustard seed of faith, I said, Lord, take my life. I need you right now, Lord. And he, ha he put a mustard seed, I accepted, I surrendered, and then he took me on this amazing journey that he's taken me on. He took me my first step to the Salvation Army family where I learned about God's grace to be forgiven for all the dumb things that I had done. He gave me faith so I can feel the fear and do it anyways. And then I learned about that being bang, boom, Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. And now he can bridge the gap to have this amazing life coach, God. And I have this every day when I wake up. I started waking up at five in the morning, putting God first. This started right then at the Salvation Army. I have continued to do this every single day, family. This is huge. If you just put God first, you wake up, boom, 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 knock the devil out, put God first, move and groove, and let's go, baby. Pause and reflect on where the Lord has taken you from. I end up graduating the Salvation Army, and I end up moving down to San Diego because I follow God's will. I end up meeting my wife down here, who's almost five years clean off all substances, who graduated from the Salvation Army, and she wants to go to officer school, the same dream that I want to go. And we end up meeting each other, and now we have a non-toxic relationship and I'm so thankful for this. This is all glory to God. I start this channel, the Neighborhood Hope Dealer channel, like nine months ago because I'm listening to a video on YouTube and Wes Watson goes, if you want to start a YouTube video, get up off the couch and go make one. And I thought he was directly talking to me. God used him through a video to talk to me. And I went up to Kate Sessions Park, which is right behind me, and I made my first video like nine months ago. I had no idea what I was doing on my Android phone. But I continued to make videos every day, every day. Put it out a couple shorts and end up making videos, a long video, every single morning. Well, because somebody, this, these two men named Hank and Charles, they see my YouTube channel and it's very small. It's like 100 subscribers. Somehow they see it. 
they got a podcast down here in San Diego. So as I stayed walking with God, being obedient, the Lord had something going on in the background that I had no idea about, but now I was able to intersect with this blessing, but now I was able to handle this blessing. So he ends up, they end up asking me to be the host of the 90 and 90 podcast. I end up going into the studio. I'm like, what? This is amazing. So I end up putting this channel aside and I start trying to build the 90 and 90 podcast channel. But once that channel got up to over a thousands of subscribers, I went back to this channel and I started working on this one again. And over the last month, I've gotten 600 subscribers and I hit 1K last night. Let's go, baby. That gives me that bing, bang, boom, boom. That Let's go, baby. It makes me excited because I had no idea what I was doing. But because I put God first and I have faith, the vision that I had, I've been able to, boom, boom. I've been able to go out there and grab it, family. Now I wake up every morning at 4.30 in the morning. I get with God. I say, thank you, Lord. Knock the devil out. <laughs> knock the devil out i say thank you lord and i continue to move and groove like i said just three years nine months and some change ago i was on a jail cell concrete in the concrete hotel you know what i'm saying i was in the crowbar hotel right i was laying on the ground on concrete just strung out facing three years of prison had no idea what i was going to do with my life and god has taken me on this amazing journey that I'm able to wake up and spread the good news. I speak every Saturday morning at the Salvation Army. I wanna be a pastor, I wanna spread the good news. I wanna to go to officer school. I'm lined up with my wife to go to officer school. I've now lined myself up with, my, with God's will because my will takes me to bad places. But this took me 37 years, family. You don't have to wait till you're 37. Just put God first right now, this moment. Say, God, I love you, I thank you, and put God first right now now and he'll continue to take you on this amazing journey because i know when i first started the two roads the road that i was supposed to go on the new the transform road it was covered in weeds and bushes like i shared yesterday and because of god and grace and faith i've been able to cultivate that road and now the road that always was clear to me the drug abuse the shame the guilt now that one has covered up with weeds and bushes and now i'm pushing through this one loving the process because like i said the man that loves to walk will walk further than the person that loves the results when we think about the results we get nervous and we get scared and we get anxious but if we think about how we can just go one step at a time because all we have is the moment and we do good decisions in the moment and we become the right thing next thing you know we're pushing through that next road and we're becoming the person that we always admired we're now becoming an asset on the planet now we're using our gifts for good family and that's what i want to do family but that's my story in a little bit of a video, I just wanted to share with my new subscribers my story, why I come out here and spread the good news. Like I said, I played pro baseball 10 years, and then I had become a junkie because of that first time I did Adderall. I thought I needed it the rest of my life, and it was the biggest lie I've ever, ever, ever thought of in my life. It was a huge lie that the devil used to continue to keep me in bondage. But the Lord is the boom, the chain breaker, baby. And he can break your chains just like he broke my chains. The sun is up. It's a beautiful day. Let's put God first, and you know how I like to end every video. Thank you for liking this video. Let's spread the algorithm. Thank you for all my subscribers, my beautiful, wonder, wonderful, God-loving subscribers. And let's do this right here. Let's go, baby!